Okay, here's an interesting tweet from Cameron Sinclair. Uh, Causes was a huge failure inside Facebook. Cameron running Architecture for Humanity, a nonprofit that raises money. What is going, what are you going to do to correct its flaws and lack of an efficient funding mechanism? Mm. Well. <laughs> I'm just reading what's on the screen here. Yeah. I, I, should, I should say, first of all, it wasn't actually built within Facebook. It was built outside of Facebook. Um, and this is a common misconception because we chose sort of a generic name for the product. And, I, and that, that created a lot of market confusion. Um, I, think, I think a lot of folks in the nonprofit community believe that Causes is actually like a product of Facebook Inc. when it's really an independent company. Um, you know, the first sort of the first critique of this, I mean, the purpose of Causes is not really to, to as a fundraising platform. So the, the goal of the company is not how much money, it's sort of uninteresting just judging philanthropy in gross dollars. Uh, you know, you sort of want to judge it on the basis of impact. So the interesting long-term problem with causes is how do we create marketplaces that are, that are efficient? Going back to the point you made before, yeah. And, and how, do we, how do we help, um, how do we make the whole process of philanthropy more transparent? How do we empower people in a variety of ways that have nothing to do with, with charity or philanthropy, uh, which have to do with, again, aggregating power? So I, I, think, I think some of the criticisms from that, we started in the nonprofit community because it was sort of, sort of felt like the right place to start. We've built out a lot of tools beyond that, and I think we need to do a much better job advocating those tools and evangelizing those tools to our partners. Um, you, know, you know, to the core of the question, the fundraising stuff is very new. I mean, we, we only introduced Birthday Wish, I think it was like eight months ago, something like that, and it's now the number one source of, of, um, of funding on the platform. And birthday wish is a, is a way of leveraging you know, an event in someone's life, a birthday or an anniversary or some other kind of important event um, as, a, as, a, as a fundraising platform for social fundraising amongst friends. And that's okay. worked quite well. OK, you both are smart and terse and, and articulate. So I'm going to ask you to answer fairly briefly a couple things. because I wanna, And I want to hear from the audience, so feel free to get your hands up. But um, geolocation, there's a lot of talk about it. You're both on the board of Gowala, I believe, right? Is that correct? Um, that's one of the digitally, you know, that's a, so at, on top of Facebook that's based on geolocation. How important, how big of a transformative thing do you think combining where we are in space with the social graph could potentially be? The trivial answer is huge. Okay, Sean? I agree. Okay, okay. Well, how about, how about a slightly less trivial answer? That's for terms. Okay, no, give me a slightly <laughs> long, just a teeny bit longer. Um, well, look, uh, in addition to the fact that the people around us are part of what gives our lives meaning, the fact that we are here and living, you know, kind of trying to add value. This is actually the basic premise of a lot of the social networking is how do you take the electronic space and add value to our life here? You don't do it as pseudonyms. You don't do it as fake identities in the cloud. You do it as, a, as who you are. Yeah. And to configure the people around you in order to make the right kind of discoveries that have a much richer life. Well, obviously, when you begin to add I am here now, and all the different things you can do with that, and the trivial ones are, hey, you know, Sean's at this club or a cafe, I'll go join him, and blah, 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 but I think there will be much more interesting ones. The level of depth behind that is obviously serious. Is LinkedIn inevitably gonna get involved in that in some way or another also? Um, well, we won't do the clubbing part not, of it. No, not. Uh, <laughs> but like conferences and so forth, and who you should talk to, and that sort of thing, absolutely, yes. Good, Sean. So, I mean, I think this is part of a, 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 more, a broader trend. Uh, it gets talked about in terms of mobile a lot, but I, I think the broader trend to appropriate a, a term from a friend of mine is the physicalization of the internet, where the internet is becoming more physical and the physical world is becoming more virtual. Um, you, so I think this goes well beyond just um, mobile applications, you know, connected mobile applications. I think it gets into the world of, you know, all sorts of other devices and all sorts of other kind of physical objects in our life. Um, you know, there's, I don't want to get too specific on, on future ideas, but I think there's a whole class of these things that have to do with the real world kind of merging with the virtual world. Okay, I see Larry's the mic. Wait one second, look. I want to just ask one follow-up, because the geolocation was a little bit of a setup. You know, I asked Neely about <coughs> regulation. My own personal opinion is Facebook, its next phase is all about regulation. How does it deal with that? I mean, and it's clearly happening all over the world. There's just too much data about people being held too complicatedly for governments not to want to get involved. And I'm curious, you know, do you see the inevitability that 
social media is moving towards regulation in some fashion? Um, I, to some degree, hope not. I don't think of the government as a great social architect. Um, obviously, you know, trust has to be maintained in strong ways. Now, part of what's interesting is there's different parts of the information. Like, for example, both uh, Facebook and LinkedIn have inboxes, and those inboxes need to be preserved absolutely, because there's things in those that people would be damaged by if those are distributed. On the other hand, for example, you know, since face Facebook's more in the spotlight on this particular issue uh, than we are, you know, like which movies you like, you know, that's not actually a really big issue, <laughs> right? So, you know, one of the things I think is interesting is because it's new and there's this classic kind of uh, kind of hesitant to, hesitancy or you know, the, like there's this old series, the shock of the new, kind of shock response to new. There's like, well, maybe there's there's a lot we should be doing. Well, there's there's certain things that should be. Uh, uh, preserved entirely, and there's other things that are actually not that big of a deal. Okay. You know, I, I, I think I think Facebook has has found itself in a little bit of trouble only because there's been a misconstrual of the word utility. You know, in, when 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 you know nerds and hackers talk about a utility, we're not talking about you know a telephone company or. Um, you know, a, a power company. We're talking about a useful application that's pragmatic, that helps you get things done, as opposed to a game. And it's actually, you know, one of the reasons that there was an opportunity on Facebook in gaming was that Mark saw Facebook primarily as utilitarian and wasn't as interested in the, in the sort of frivolous gaming type applications, and thus there was a market opportunity there that wasn't being addressed by Facebook. Okay. 